So in this video I'm going to show you 10 ways to stabilize your tow car and trailer and reduce the probability of trailer sway. But I want to emphasize that's reduce the probability, not eliminate, because no one of these 10 techniques can completely eliminate the chances of trailer sway and not even if you do all 10 of them, but they will all help just a little bit. Now the tips are in no particular order, but we can start with rear tire pressures because when you're towing anything even remotely heavy, you do need to increase the tire pressures on the rear axles. I've got a whole video where I explain how to do that and why to do that, so I won't go further into it now. Now whilst on the subject of pressures, the second tip has to be sufficient tyre pressure on the caravan. Now what is sufficient? Well that's really going to be determined by the load on the tyre and you need to consult your caravan manufacturer's handbook which will give you recommended pressures. One thing about caravan tyres is that because the caravan tends to get not used for long periods of time, you might neglect the tyre pressures and over time all tyres do lose a little bit of pressure. So when you take it out for the first time after several several weeks or even months, it's always a good idea to drop by a servo and check the pressures are uh, high enough because if you don't then the tyre will start to move relative to the rim and that can actually induce sway or certainly help it more, make it more difficult to get it back under control. So correct tyre pressures in the caravan is your next point. So still on tyres, the next point is tyre age. Now tyres will actually age out and there's debate as to what, when a tyre is too old, five years, eight years, whatever the case may be, the reality is there's no fixed time for it. It does depend on the nature of the tyre and how well it's been stored and used etc. But the thing about caravans again is because they tend not to do a lot of kilometres per year, the tyres can end up being very old and unable to grip the road, unable to be flexible, yet still still have plenty, plenty of tread depth. Now I've got another video where I explain how to check the age of your tyres and it's a good idea to do that on caravan tyres, particularly if you're purchasing them, because you often find that the tyres are very old yet still have plenty of tread depth. The ones here um, are only three years old so I've got a fair way to go on them yet. Now this caravan came standard with mud tyres, which I haven't um, changed yet, but mud tyres are really not required even for what I do, which is in fact tow this thing um, off-road. I'd be quite happy with all terrains. What I need is a strong tyre, light truck construction. I don't need this very open mud terrain pattern. Now that's going to um, use quite a bit of fuel compared to a more close pattern, but from a trailer stability point of view, we've got these very large, deep tread blocks, and what that means is that the vehicle will squirm around on top of them and you're not going to get the road holding and grip that an all-terrain would offer particularly in the wet so when these tyres wear out I'll be changing them to all-terrains still in the light truck construction for puncture proof but mud tyres do not help when it comes to a sway situation. Now another tip is tow level and that particularly applies to tandem axle caravans. I've got another whole video where I go into how and why you should tow level so I'm not going to explain that one further here. Please watch that video for more details. We all know wheel alignment is important for cars, but it's also important for trailers, particularly independent suspension trailers like this one, and it's important to get that checked at every service, otherwise you will not have a stable trailer and that will potentially also start to increase the chances of sway and make it more difficult to recover. Relative weight of tow car to trailer is really important for towing stability. Essentially, you want a tow car which is as heavy as possible and a trailer which is as light as possible. Now that's really difficult to do for the average caravanning setup, but every kilogram will help. So for example, I have my fridge here, which is in the tow car, actually just ahead of the axle, as opposed to on the caravan in here where I only carry lighter stuff. As a further example, jerry can here of water could be a fuel um, as well. I don't actually carry one of those on the caravan because I've got a long range fuel tank in the ute and I've got a water tank 
round about there as well so both all of those things have helped make my tow car heavier than the trailer and that's really really important for towing stability have a look at my video where I explore all sorts of different weight combinations and you'll see what I mean now where you place the weight in the tow car is important the fridge is heavy so that goes as far forward as I can actually just ahead of the axle and these two boxes look identical but they're not the lighter one goes at the back you don't want to put heavy weights at the back so if I was going to find a home for this jerry can right at the back would not be ideal I'd want to try and find a home for it nice and forward over the axle which I can do on the other side now this is a tough one to do as well but where you have weight try and centralize it over the caravan's axle now that's very very difficult due to the nature of the caravan design and also the gear that you're going to be taking but again every kilogram helps so here's a couple of little ideas just jerry can which could go in its holder here well potentially i could just put it in here instead and then that's a little bit closer towards the axle so that could help now I could take my hiking pack and I could put it in there or I could carry it in here and put it there for example and if you've got a lot of um, really heavy cookware well here's a good place to carry it as opposed to put it right into the front over here so everything you can do to get weight over the axle here will help and don't fall into the trap of thinking that more and more table mass is always a good thing you can have too much table mass and that can actually make your trailer unstable and again watch my trailer weights video to explain why that's the case as well as centralizing it's important to get weight as low as possible something i explain in this video Trailer brakes are absolutely critical for big heavy trailers like caravans, both to avoid sway in the first place and to recover if it does occur. What you're looking for is to have the brake pedal pressure about the same with the trailer attached as without and that should be achieved when the brake control is set to about 50% sensitivity. If you need more than that then you need to get your brake serviced and checked over. So that was 10 ways to manage sway with things you've already got on your caravan. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of anti-sway devices, how to combat sway when it happens and I'm going to finish up with some actionable advice about driving to the conditions. Now if sway does occur, the best thing you can do is press away the sway and for full details of that, please have a look at this video. It could well be life-saving. Now sway can be prevented and also recovered from using electronic systems. There's two types, one for the trailer, one for the car. And if you've got a next gen four, then you're lucky enough to have both in one vehicle. Take a look at this video for more details. There's also many friction-based devices for anti-sway, such as this one, but these days I prefer to set the trailer up so it doesn't need them in the first place, and the two electronic systems do a very good job of detecting and preventing sway. A piece of advice is one you've probably heard before. Policemen trot it out all the time. Drive to the conditions. Very simple to do, apparently, but it's completely useless unless you know what those conditions actually are. And in the case of trailer sway, I do have a video where I list 10 of them. But here's an example. Let's say that you're driving along, nice country road, there's no real wind because you're in a forest and it's flat and it's not raining. You're happy to do 100 k's an hour because you know your trailer won't sway. Then, as you're driving along, the forest's clear and you start going downhill and then you come into a big, wide open area and there's a bridge. Okay, you've now got several sway factors. One, you're going downhill. Two, as you go downhill, you might pick up speed. Three, that big open area is increased wind because you're not sheltered by the trees anymore. And maybe let's say it's raining, so you've got four. So you think to yourself, okay, I've got four out of 10 potential sway factors. Instead of cruising at 100 k's an hour, I'm gonna knock it back to 90 or 80 because I recognize I'm in a high risk sway situation. Then, once you get back 
back over the other side, you're back into the trees, the, the, the rain stopped, etc. You go, okay, those risk factors have gone away. I'm going to drive to the conditions. It's safe for me to get back up to 100. So driving to the conditions doesn't mean crawling everywhere at 70 or 80. What it means is recognizing the situations and factors which will uh, affect sway or increase the risk of sway and then reducing your speed accordingly. And of course, knowing 